Tapua, Mulia. We start now. Kita tunggu participant dulu lah, baru lapan belas boleh. Okay, okay. Can I just say hi to Puan Azura? Assalamualaikum. Awak dekat je beli map lo. Sorry, what about? Dekat je, dekat Unimap. Saya ingat awak jauh ke mana lah. No, I'm still here. Also dekat Unimap. Um, I, I think I'm no longer serving, yeah? Which location in Unimap? Unimap kan uh, mata. You, uh, I dengan koperasi Unimap initially But I'm no longer serving koperasi uh, Unimap dah Now I'm doing um, freelancing Okay But still in Perlis But still in Perlis, yes We are still in Perlis Yelah, Mitch Tawit dengan Faiz Haa 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 tapi after um, the whole family got caught with COVID last time tu, dia dia bawa batuk lah Mr. Puan. Dia rasa memang suka aku, dia tak nak suka nak. He's still here. Ni, hari ni pun dia dia macam sengau-sengau manja. No, never mind. Online manja <laughs> tak apa. Dia yeah. nak offline. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming. No, thank you for inviting eh. Saya tengok-tengok nama awak eh, macam familiar. Tengok muka, ya yeah, familiar. <laughs> Cuma besar sikit. <laughs> ah, kami besar banyak. <laughs> also, hi. Hi, Kistina. Is it Kistina? Oh, yes. Hi, Miss Nadra. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Also, let's lose Maybe the... Have you eaten your breakfast? Uh, I normally just have a cup of drink. Before I do any um yum 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 speaking in the morning, uh, because later I got uh stomach ache, mm -hmm. and then it got problem. Hmm, like that. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, I can see people are like joining in. Mm. Mm. I think I didn't get a chance to like be under uh, Madam Kartini's classes kot. Mm. Hmm. I, I what grade bila? 2015. Mm. Graduation diploma. April. April. Diploma, degree? Uh, Arau diploma, yeah. Eh, sorry. 2015. Eh. Uh, Arau is 2012. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, rasa lama tu. Lama. <laughs> Yes, oh, right? yelah. Tw kalau 2012, it was uh, yeah. 12 years ago. Uh, 12 years, 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Mm. Mm, tapi nama tu tetap familiar sebab asyik ambil attendance. <laughs> 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 yang student online ni dah nama tak familiar sebab tak pernah ambil attendance. They just speak inside. Yes, the, yes, uh, yes. True, true, true. So, um, the participants are all final semester students or yeah. macam mana? Today, this morning will be part. Four all parts, right? All parts. They all have part. only. We have only two parts. Part two, and also part four diploma. Part two and part four. First year and second year. I see. Only two batch. Part four diploma. Diploma. Di diploma. Okay. Diploma. Okay. Degree okay. is no longer here. No longer. Oh, okay. So, everything goes to Shala? Uh, merbuk. Merbuk. Oh, merbuk. I see, I see, I see. I think I, I, think I saw Madam Shima also. But, but, uh, mm. I'm not seeing. Should we wait for participants or we could just start? Hi, Sir Rashid. 
uh, also wait my, for five minutes here. Yeah. Also Christina. my um, lecturer. Uh, but I but I believe uh, Serasha is having a hard time to like recognize me because I wasn't really <laughs> participating at that point of time. <laughs> Encik Rashid kena ingat orang. Kan Encik Rashid kan? Hmm. <laughs> How are you Encik uh, Sir Rashid? You're doing well? Okay. It's been a while since I visited UITM Arau. Rasa last time hmm. jumpa dengan Sir, Sir uh, Dr. Azrul lah last time. Hmm. Dia duk kata mai lah. Amboi dia kata tu lama. Cok eh je. Sorry, sorry. We, we went, we went. <laughs> but, 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 tadi saya tutup. So, anyhow, welcome to UITM Perlis after so many years. When did you left UITM? Uh, UITM around 2012. Yeah. Graduated oh. 2012. UITM Shah Alam 2015. So, I was 10 years younger at that time. <laughs> Not only that was, you, that was that was still you. Still you. Still. Younger during that time, everybody, <laughs> including myself, also. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the time fly past, huh? Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ten years. Ten years. Yeah, yeah. Ten years. One decade. <laughs> so, Kistina, yourself is in um part four. Assuming a part four? Tak. No, part two. Part two. Okay, okay. Carrying a huge responsibility right? uh, to become moderator this morning. So I just want to acknowledge you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Why not? Because it's more funny. No worries, no worries. <laughs> but then I think I, I remember <laughs> myself. I can't keep in two the kind class. So, but you are the only class in a punchy salo, so I can't be up into punchy. And now, now the building is it still the cut block E? Uh, block for, e, yes, block C, yes. Uh, everything is the same. Everything else is the same. Uh, walk in and then you will see, ah, sama je. Sama, sama je. The new building was constructed in 2000, so uh -huh. till now uh -huh. there's no more extension. Apa, apa, ya, ni apa, uh, tak ada apa, apa, physical, apa, 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 tambahan, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Still okay. the same building, Al-Farabi Al 1, Al-Farabi 2, Al-Farabi, and then Block A, Block B. But okay. when I first joined UITM, there was only about two blocks. Block yeah. you mm. and also uh, block A, block B. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now now got so many blocks already. Yeah, yeah. Waktu zaman awak dah kena sumpah dah kan? Bangunan kayu tu jadi batu <laughs> semua dah kan? Ha. Uh. Uh. Uh, dia tetap batu <laughs> sekarang. Bangunan kayu, but, but, but uh, the building yang yang kita panggil ketua tu, is it still there? Uh, I, no, uh, I, want to, I just wanted to tell you that, oh, one apa uh, changes. We have uh. a demolish apa, so they want three ketua. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. To make it's still there. Is but it's still there. No, no, demolished. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. they changed to gym. Yeah, uh, uh, yang uh, atas uh, panas. I see, I see. <laughs> Last time I still um took my exams there. Yeah, hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I still got the chance to take exams there. Yes. Yeah, the banjir yeah. tu. Remember the 10 years ago yang during banjir ah, time tu? Banjir besar. Heavy tu. Flood, yeah, yes, yeah. the heavy ah. flood. And yeah. then like uh, all the place got no water supply and then we all going back and forth. Uh, lepas tu pergi library. <laughs> Everything is just so messy. <laughs> <laughs> and then that was in oh, 2010 good mungkin. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. I think mm. it's about that time. Yang Perlis got hit like a very heavy flood tu kan? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Uh, but five years before that, there was also satu lagi. 2000 uh, and then 2010 i see <laughs> 2010 yang paling teruk yang sekali yang paling teruk sekali ha ha yeah 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 kami duduk even like go outside kan hmm lepas tu, tu time exam yes 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 but, 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 but then after 2010 do we like still 
have the flight issue not that I've heard of not that big tak ada ha. ke ha. not that big anymore don't think so ha. after that ha. dia dah perbaiki saliran apa semua ok lah mm-hmm. tapi tak longkang kan kecil-kecil sekarang kan semua longkang besar-besar kan <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> itu je sebenarnya solution dia mm-hmm. tapi lambat bertindak got it got it mm. ok it's already 5 minutes kot I think we can start now because maybe student waiting at uh, watching at the YouTube right oh yeah okay ah streaming also at YouTube okay good luck assalamualaikum assalamualaikum hi welcome <laughs> thank you thank you as well for uh, inviting i'm very honored like to come back yeah we glad to see you right <laughs> Okay, proceed, Christina. Okay. Assalamualaikum and very good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Accounting Global Week 2022. My name is Christina Hasha and I will serve as your moderator for today. Before we begin, I would like to remind you that there will be a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. You may ask the presenter any question directly or you could just simply type it in the chat box below and I will read it for you. Next, all the participants are required to fill in the attendance and e-certificate link that will be provided during the presentation. For your information, this session will also be live streaming on YouTube channel Paradise Perlis. Okay. Now, moving on to our session, it is a great pleasure for me to introduce uh, our honorable guest speaker, Ms. Noor Nadira, Nadira Binti Dahlan. Who will, who will be talking about tying the knots between accounting, English communication, and marketing. Before I hand over the session to Ms. Nadra, allow me to, in, to introduce our speaker for today. Ms. Noor Nadra, a lovely lady who is now an investment and takaful advisor with accounting and finance experience in both MNC and SME companies. With 11,000 followers on TikTok, She aspires to help more Malaysians to gain clarity on financial management and security through creative messaging via the social media platform. Back in the days, Ms. Nadra received her diploma in accountancy at UITM Perlis. She then further her studies to obtain bachelor's degree in accountancy at UITM Shah Alam. She began her career as a contract English teacher at SMK site Sirajuddin for three months before moving into the corporate world and working for companies like IBM Malaysia Sendian Bharat as financial analyst. Then, in March 2019, she joined Koperasi Yudima Perlis Bharat as an accountant and finance executive. Now, without further ado, let's welcome our guest speaker for today to begin this session. Ms. Nadra, the platform is all yours. Thanks. Thank you very much for the very super um, nice and warm uh, introduction. And I feel like uh, Miss Kisina had already took up my introduction. So I'm like, oh, how do I introduce now? <laughs> okay. <laughs> But anyway, uh, this session is already feeling a little bit tense. I just want to check in the chat section. If uh, you guys are there, if you guys are there, could you please uh, let me know um, uh, by typing in here. Just want to see if you guys are really here. Can, can you guys like help me out by typing in here? If you guys are really there. So that I'm sure that here, here, there's like only two, three. <coughs> two, three. Come on, guys. Oh, you guys are here. All right, all right. You guys are here. Just to f- just to have this kind of um, connection between you and me. Because I don't want to feel like I'm just talking to um, Kistina and Madam Azura and also Madam Kartini. Because if that's the case, then I would rather go to ITM and speak uh, inside the room. Je lah, better, right? If you guys say, okay, thank you for the uh, responses. <laughs> Adik-adik ni, why so stressful one this morning? Okay, so uh, without further ado, um, today is Friday. I would like to take uh, a little bit of time this morning to um, to, 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 to say thank you uh, for this kind invitation. Um, it, it feels like I'm having some um, opportunities to like meet my younger brothers and sisters uh, back in uh, UITM. So, uh, like Miss Kisina, just um, can I like share my slides, Miss Kisina? Do you mind? I can, right? Yeah, yeah no problem. Okay, no problem. Okay, are you guys seeing this? Okay, you guys are able to see this? Hoping you guys are able to see this. 
uh, let me know in the section if you guys are able to see this so that I know that the chat section, the chat section. Okay. All right. Okay. Super cool. Thank you. All right. So, <clears throat> okay. So, thank you very much again. Uh, I will try to make this session um, actually as interactive as possible. Okay. So, the way I conduct my, um, how do I say this? Uh, the way I that I normally conduct my session is through two ways communication. So, normally people ask me questions. Uh, but then if you do have questions, though, um, I would rather you to keep it to the end of the session so that maybe we can like uh, troubleshoot or answer that together. Um, just so that, uh, because if you, if you like um, ask in the middle, I might actually miss your question. So that's the thing that, I'm, 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 that I have concern of. So I would rather you to uh, gather those uh, questions. And then maybe type in the chat box later during our Q&A sessions so that I could really take a look at those um, uh, questions that you have. All right. So um, for today's session, I'd like to just make some sharings um, on this topic that I chose, um, tying the knots between accounting, English communication and also marketing. So uh, you may be wondering why accounting, English communication, maybe you can make some sense uh, on the English, right? Because we've been, we've been all utilizing English in our learning and our teaching and all that. And how about marketing? So um, I'm going to walk you through um, my, uh, my personal experience, basically, so, which is why I feel like um, I would really like to take this chance to have this kind of interaction between me and you, between myself and you, uh, so that if you have like, um, you know, sometimes when I think about uh, when I was doing my diploma, right, there are times when I feel like, why am I doing this? What, how, not how, what does the future have? How, how would my future looks like? What does my future have uh, awaits me, you know? So uh, I understand that there are times in your life, point of life that you feel like, um, what is it that I'm trying to do right now? I mean, it could be that you're joining um, diploma, you, that you are doing, I, I'm assuming that everybody's is in diploma in accountancy, right? Is, it, is, is that the case? That, that yes, everybody's yes. in diploma, right? Okay. So, uh, because truthfully speaking, um, my experience in joining diploma in accountancy, it wasn't a voluntary one. <laughs> it wasn't a voluntary one. When I was, um, it, when I did my SPM, I was expecting, I was seeing myself as pursuing my interest in English, basically. <clears throat> so, uh, but, but I still do have accounting subject uh, when I was taking my SPM. So, uh, accounting is like, um, it's like a side story at the point of time. So, uh, in 20, in after my SPM, so I got this offer from UITM, Diploma in Accountancy. I'm like, no, I don't want to become an accountant. It was the last thing that I think I want to do. I don't want to become an accountant. But uh, at the point of time, it was an offer that um, my parents think um, worth taking. So I just decided to pursue. Okay. So um, let okay. So throughout this session, I just want to give some heads up. All right. So how I'll be conducting this session is that um, if you would like to take if you would like to make the most out of this session, I would really recommend you to have pens and paper because tr sharing with you seven life lessons that I've learned um, in my seven years uh, after I graduate. So basically the time duration would take about uh, after I graduate and up to this point of time. So I would like to take this oppor opportunity to like share with you uh, the life lesson that I've personally learned and I feel like I have this responsibility uh, to actually let you know what are my thoughts about uh, whatever that's been happening in my uh, in, in the past seven years, basically. And then, uh, so yeah, that will, that will be it. Um, do I have your, can I just ask you if I have your permission to have a little bit more introduction about myself? Can I see some response? If it's okay, if it's okay, then let me know by typing in, let's go. By typing in, let's go. Let me know in the comments if it's okay for me to proceed by typing in, let's go. Let's go, right? Come on, people. 
Yep, 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 yep. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, awesome. Okay. So now, who is Noor Nadira B. Dahlan? So like uh, Christina had, actually Christina literally took 50% of my introduction. Christina, hiya. <laughs> All right, just kidding, okay? Uh, so uh, I did my diploma in accountancy at UIT Mara Perlis and I graduated in the year of 2012, actually. And then I did my uh, bachelor's degree in accountancy at UIT Shah Alam, Selangor, and I graduated uh, in 2015, April, to be exact. Uh, and then uh, throughout, and then after I graduated, I went for my uh, first professional job, and then I took up another different job, and then eventually I got my license in with FIM, Federation of Investment Managers Malaysia. And also I've got my license with uh, Malaysia Takafu Association. So basically what I'm currently doing is uh, I'm a consultant, unit trust, and also Takafu. And then uh, with uh, with accountancy and fine and a bit of finance background, and also uh, English communication. So I'm what I'm trying to deliver to you is that I'm I'm bringing in these uh, different aspects, this different skills that I would say, into the table of which I thought maybe if you could you know pick up a few that maybe um, you know become an inspiration in a way to you. Okay, so uh, my working experience, um, after I graduated, basically, after I graduated, I took a chance and, and uh, an opportunity to become a replacement English teacher at SMK Sekshira Judy. And that took me about three months. And then afterwards, I've got my first professional job at IBM Malaysia as a financial analyst. All right. And then uh, in 2019, after about uh, 15, uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, about three to four, four years later, I went back to Perlis uh, because uh, at, at IBM, I was serving at Damansara, um, Banda Utama Damansara. And then after that, in 2019, I went back to Perlis. I came back to Perlis um, and then I got a position as account and finance executive at Corporasi Unimap um, Perlis Berhad. And then eventually, earlier this year, um, I've decided to pursue another different aspect, uh, another different um, challenge, uh, which is by uh, signing up for Takafu Unit Trust and also ASB Finance Consultant. And then uh, along the way as well, because I found out that I couldn't just like let go of my passion in English, so I've built out my own um, page. Fun English communication, where it, um, where I am inspired to help people to gain more confidence in speaking English, and uh, I've got something to share about this, but I'll, I'll be sharing later on, right? And also because my, um, I wouldn't say specialty, but I would say my strength, my current strength is on financial management. I've decided that maybe I should try um, helping people to understand, have clarity on financial. Uh, management through social media um, through social media so I decided to uh, put things on social media platform and I've been uh, actively using TikTok ever since TikTok ever since yes so throughout this uh, session uh, I just would like like I've mentioned earlier I, I, I would like to share with you the seven life session lessons <laughs> seven life lessons that I've actually learned in the past seven years that actually I personally feel like I, I wish that I've known this before I graduated okay uh, so I've been made an uh, uh, the 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 way I understand it is that you guys are either from part two and part four diploma in accountancy. Was that correct? If it's correct, then let me know. Which part are you guys from? If you're from part two, then type in two. If you're from part four, then type in four. Part four, part two. So I'm seeing uh, two, four, two, four. Okay, it seems like part four is like. 60% from the comment, judging from the comment section, part four is like uh, 60% and the rest are uh, uh, in part two, but never mind. Okay, so uh, this is basically the things, the lessons that I wish I've known uh, before I graduated. So we are going to go through one by one. Uh, so I'm going to go through lesson one first. And then again, if you have questions, then you could write it down so that later on during um, Q&A session, you could actually um, ask. Okay. 
actually to be honest i'm feeling a little bit intense because i, I, I couldn't see like everybody here but it's all right okay so life lesson number one <coughs> Everyone should be financially literate. Now, what does financial, financially literate means? Uh, financially literate uh, based on investment.com website is the ability to understand effectively use various financial skills, including personal financial management, budgeting, and investing. So if you see from the definition itself, it took a number of skills. Um, to actually consider ourselves as being financially literate. So financial literacy is the foundation of your relationship with money and it is a lifelong journey of learning. So that yeah, that's correct. When it, when it says here lifelong journey, lifelong journey of learning, um, it actually, we actually have to take um, considerably a, quite a long time to actually understand what financial literacy is. All right, and then it calls this, uh, the earlier you start, the better off you will be because education is the key to success when it comes to money. So this whole phrase itself um, have a huge message to, um, to each and every one of us. Okay, so uh, let me know in the comments if you have read Rich Dad Poor Dad book by Robert T. Kiyosaki or if you haven't, maybe you have, heard about it before, or if you've never heard about this, about this book before, uh, also let me know. So you could type in, number one, if you've read it, number two, if, you've, if, you, have, uh, if you know about this book but have never like, read it, and also type in three, if you don't actually, uh, if, you don't, if you never heard about this book. So type in one, two, or three. Two, two, three, two, three, three, Okay, two, three, two. Okay, awesome, awesome. So uh, I'm assuming that I'm assuming based judging from the uh, comments from the comments, uh, sorry, judging from the response in the chat box, I'm assuming that most of you um, have not yet read this book, and it's okay because I have just read this book phone actually, <laughs> I myself. Okay, so um, it was a great book. I would really recommend you to to actually buy it if you have the I mean capacity of buying it. Uh, it's a great book and recommend it to everybody actually because uh, it has uh, great messages inside and one of it is uh, everybody should be financially literate and then it talks about financial literacy. Um, and, and what does it even mean? Okay. So basically how I'm going to describe this to you is that um, financial literacy distinguish between rich and poor people. I'm going to repeat that again. Financial literacy distinguish or separates the rich and poor people. And also, the fun thing is that uh, the rich and poor people uh, inside this book is not exactly determined by the wealth that the person have. Wealth, maksudnya uh, kekayaan dia, kan? It, it talks about more about the mindset and when you have this kind of rich people kind of mindset and eventually the, the wealth that come chasing after you. It was, it was a, a beautiful reading and uh, uh, like I've mentioned before, I really recommend you to find one and look up on the content yourself. Okay, so what does it mean with financial literacy again? So assuming, let's say, uh, that you've just got yourself a... But of course, we don't play, we don't play lottery, lah, kan? But, you, but let's say we just got yourself with a huge amount of money. Let's say you just want a, a, a cabutan bertuah, gores dan menang, kan? And then you got yourself 100K. Okay. So a person who is financially literate would know what to do with that 100%, would eventually make that 100, 100% pula, 100,000 ringgit, and may even be able to generate more on the 100,000 ringgit. While people with poor financial literacy uh, will eventually turn poor or maybe poorer than before he or she got the, the money, the 100K of money. Okay, uh, So what, what I'm trying to imply here is that um, financial literacy, it took up uh, a number of components, uh, which is why um, it became one of the 
things that I'm pursuing right now. So the thing I'm pursuing right now is on investment, specifically in unit trust, unit amana, ASB financing, um, ASB financing. I'm not sure if you guys are aware about ASB in the first hand. Let me know in the comment if you know about ASB, Amana Sahamubi Putra. If you know, then you tap in one. If you don't, then you tap in two. Okay, there's only like literally three people who knows about ASB, so it's okay. <laughs> so if you know, so ASB is actually a platform for us to do our investment. Um, okay, just to okay, <coughs> I'm not sure. I'm not even sure if you heard about unit trust before. So let me know in the comment if you know about unit trust. One, if you know, and two, if you just heard about it like now. One, if you know what is unit trust, you've heard about it at least. One, one, two. Okay, yeah. All right, cool, cool. Thank you. Thank you for the response, guys. All right, so <coughs> so number one, uh, what is unit trust? Unit trust in Bahasa Melayu is unit amanah, right? So just to give you some brief explanation of what unit amanah is all about. So now you imagine, <coughs> imagine that you have, can you guys see this? Okay, you imagine that this is tabung. You know, a fund. Kita akan panggil dia fund lepas ni. So, you imagine tabung. So, tabung ni, we are collecting people's money. So, it's a pool of money, basically. We are collecting this pool of money from people, uh, basically from people, public, people from public. Okay? So, um, person A invest 10,000, invest 500, invest 100,000, invest 1 million, whatever numbers of investment that they want to invest to. Okay? So, this pool of money... <coughs> will be managed by somebody called fund manager. Right, so this fund manager is going to take this pool of money and then they invest in somewhere else. They, depending on the type of um, portfolio, so uh, I'm, I'm going to be utilizing equity for this example. So depending on the type of portfolio that the fund manager is having, they can invest this pool of money uh, by purchasing uh, shares basically equities in other companies. For example, Starbucks, Apple, Samsung. So when you find, uh, when you are able to find this uh, unit trust thingy, uh, and then you invested in it, and then you know where are the places that the fund manager investing this pool of money into, then you too would, know, would actually understand that you are indirectly investing in those companies, which is one of the cool things that I find about um, investing in it trust. Okay, so, and then the comparison between ASB and also um, unit trust is that ASB and also unit trust is basically the same thing, except that for ASB, because it's security is supported by um, by the government, uh, the, the fund that we are talking about, it, they are the price data. It has its own price. Right, so when when you when you want to invest in this pool of in this fund, they are the pergerakan dia, they are the hari hari, they are the naik turun harga dia. That is what unit trust is about. Tapi ASB harga dia satu unit, harga dia fixed ringgit. So when you purchase at one ringgit, you will be able to sell it at one ringgit as well. So it's about purchasing and selling units lah in unit trust, right? So in ASB. Uh, the price is fixed at one ringgit. So when you buy at one ringgit, you're able to sell at one ringgit. And then at the end of the accounting year, at the end of the year, they decided to give you dividend, and that will be the return that you'll be getting from ASB. However, for unit trust, uh, you'll be able to enjoy like two types of returns. Number one is the dividend, like ASB tadi, and number two is the capital gain. Now, would anybody have any idea what capital gain is all about? I mean, do you have any idea? If tap in. Tap in one if you don't have an, any idea about that, uh, about what that, that is. Tap in one. All right. So, uh, capital gain is basically uh, the amount that you're getting for selling your unit at a price higher compared to the time when you purchase the units. Okay, for example, when you buy a unit today at uh, 90 cents, and then when you sell at one ringgit, then you're getting what? Then you're getting an increment of ten cent, and that will be your capital gain. 
So that would be about uh, unit trust. I, I, I'm not going like technical things. I just would like to let you know that there are an instrument called ASP and also unit trust out there as an options for you. Because I wish that while I was studying, I was aware about these types of instruments. Okay, so let's back to the basics again. I wish I known I had known about this type of instrument to invest, and actually, um, not only know but maybe have some interest too. Okay, so I look forward to investing when I first, um, started my career. All right, so let's move on to the uh, second lesson. Right. So this actually um, took place like recently, uh, 24th to 26th May, where I've got, uh, where I I'm not even sure if you guys know Ayman Azla. Let me know in the comment. If you know him, type in I know. Type in I know Ayman Azla <coughs> in the comment section. So both Ayman and I, we ran through um, a boot camp. All right, yeah. You, you guys should know. I mean, he's kind of popular among youth these days and he had been building up his portfolio since 11 years ago uh, specifically uh, mentoring tutoring youth um, especially in the ground of counseling and also uh, relationship marriage uh, and all that so he's into helping youth to establish uh, uh, basically confidence in those areas of life okay so uh, both Ayman and I ran Falcom Fun English Communication Bookcamp at PTSS um, entertaining, no entertaining. I mean, we are delivering our uh, messages to uh, these 90 beautiful students at PTSS. Um, specifically talking about our struggles when it comes to speaking English. Now, uh, would you please like, let me know in the comment section what would be the struggles when it comes to English speaking? Or do you, or if if you have issues to speak English in front of public, you type one. If you don't, then type two in the comment section. <clears throat> okay, super cool. Okay, mm, that's very nice. So most of you uh, said one, uh, that you don't actually have issues to speak English in front of public. Uh, two, if you've got uh, the issues, right? Okay, so what do you think um, the most common issues that people have when it comes to English speaking. I mean, you could write down a, a simple word like um, shy, macam gitu. What do you think the struggles that most people face most when it comes to English speaking? In front of people, in front of people. Okay, so let me just try to uh, recap what we had done through the previous three days okay so um so for most of the students there they say they say that uh, the reason why they are struggling to have like um they, they, they are having issues to like speak english in front of people uh because of number one they are shy they are afraid of their grammar and then they said um they are not confident about how they sound like and that uh, that doesn't really shock me because I know that there are people who are not comfortable listening back to their own voice. You know, there were times when you, uh, I'm not sure if you did this, but there were times when you try to sing and then you record yourself and when, when you are singing, you are something, you nyanyi tu macam sedap sangat dah lah kan. And then when you try to listen to it, it was a complete, um, complete trouble. Uh, when you listen back to your own voice, anybody had experienced this kind of issue before or you don't actually have uh, tried to experiment that yourself? Okay, <laughs> so for myself, I tried to do that. Uh, I recorded myself singing, Cik Kono macam, oh, the best ni, aku nyanyi sedap ni. And then when, you, when I just kind of listen back to that uh, recording, I'm like, oh, well, this is the reason why I don't become a professional singer because I really suck at it. Okay. <laughs> So basically, uh, those are the kind of reasons that when people, uh, the reasons that most people are struggling with when it comes to English speaking, they are afraid of the grammar. They they are having issues, having issues in terms of like finding the words to to deliver the message that they had in their mind, you know. And then uh, when when we try to dig up 
you know, the issues. It all boils down to this one particular cause, which I call it the, the root cause. And it happens like, uh, it is like the most common cause for most people, which is, <clears throat> you know, the shyness, the not confidence. Uh, I'm scared of my own voice. I don't like, uh, I, I, I don't know what um, people will think about me, blah, 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 blah. And it all boils down to this one particular um, root cause, where it goes back to this, to this thing that I call the the the, the eaten the eaten of God, the ultimate cause. It's actually what will people think of me. Yes. So you're shy because you have this kind of mentality that what will people think of about me. You're, you're not confident in grammar because you think that people are judging you on your grammar because what will people think about me? You are not confident about your appearance, about your voice, about how you look like because you feel you have this kind of mindset about what will people think about me? So actually, it all boils down to that one particular um, ultimate issue. And uh, let me just tell you this. <clears throat> The one thing that I've shared during the session is that let's say that you are giving a speech to like a hundred people in a room. Let's say one at a point uh, at a one point in your life you are giving a speech to a um, hundred participants. Okay, so you were shaking. Imagine that you were shaking. Uh, you know these hundred people. You doesn't even know them, and they doesn't even know you. Most, it's high likely that they don't even know you. <coughs> And then you're shaking, and then you have this kind of mindset flooding in. Oh, people don't like me. I just not, I'm just not good enough. I'm not good in my grammar, blah, 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 blah. And just have that kind of thought while you were standing and holding your microphone. Okay, so let me just tell you this. <clears throat> you would not be able to satisfy anybody, all right? So, which is why I've mentioned here, learning is a lifetime process. So you, you should be allowing yourself a time to digest to give yourself a chance to learn all over again. Because the thing is, you could not like satisfy um, everybody. Okay, you could not, you would not be able to satisfy everybody. And I've told the students that, let's say, while you're giving speech um, in front of the hundred people, and let's just assume the worst that there are actually maybe three or five guys at the back who are laughing at you because you are making this silly grammatical error and you're pronouncing things not right or whatever. Let's just assume that those people are laughing, like literally boo you, okay? That they literally boo you. <coughs> so uh, for most people, that would be an embarrassment, right? But I would like to give you these tips so that you can have that kind of mindset, mindset shifted. Okay. If... You have a hundred people watching you, listening to your speech, and there are literally like five people who are laughing at you. Those are only 5% of people. Only 5% of people who would eventually, you would not be able to entertain at all, and you don't have to control, uh, their, you don't have what it takes to control the actions. So what if, rather than focusing on those five people who are laughing at you, who are making... Uh, fun of you for making silly mistakes, why don't you acknowledge the remaining 95% of people who actually sit still and listens to you? Again, rather than you focusing on those people, 5% of people who actually hated you, for some reason just laugh at you, for some reason just do not appreciate whatever it is that you are doing, why don't you focus yourself on the remaining 95% of people who actually sit there and even if among the 95% are not listening to you or maybe even think that uh, your speech is not good for them or whatever, they are still respecting you by, by being in silence, right? So they are still respecting you. So why don't you, as a person who took the gut to be in front of these people, acknowledge these 95% of people rather than letting those 5% people who are laughing at you, or making fun of you, to shrink your motivation to speak. 
Let me know in the comment if you agree with this. Type in agree if you agree if you agree with this um, argument that I'm sharing. Type in agree. Okay. So I hope um, this is also something that I wish I've learned because I feel like when I learn this during my study time, I would be able to become somebody that would be able to support my friends. Because I know that you two know that among yourself, there are friends who may actually need this kind of advice, right? There are friends who are literally afraid to even present themselves in front of the class. And there will be friends who are worried about everything, who are worried about what people are going to talk about them. This is something that I wish I had known before I graduated before because I feel like when I've known this earlier, then I will be able to be supportive of my friends and myself, apparently. Myself and also my friends. Okay? So let's move on. <coughs> Life lesson three. Environment is greater than willpower. Now beforehand, what the heck is willpower? Anybody have any idea what willpower means? So willpower is actually, uh, you can say that as a, a form of motivation. Okay? So let's just imagine that one day, katakanlah you macam, uh, okay, tahun 2022, I nak kurus. It's like literally uh, the, the the azam tahun baru for most of the ladies. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm generalizing, but maybe I'm generalizing. Katakanlah semua orang, uh, semua orang pula, uh, most of ladies got this azam baru kata, tahun ni I nak kurus. And you know, in order for you to get kurus in your own uh, perception, for some people kurus means getting from L size to smaller size. For some people kurus means you are reducing your weight. Whatever kind of definition, description that you have in mind about kurus. Uh, you guys know that, people know that generally, generally, in order for you to 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 get kurus is to do what? Two things. There's literally two things. You eat well and you exercise. There are actually two things. You go on to any website, you go on to any coaches, there are literally only two things. You eat well and you exercise. Everybody knows this. And even if children, sorry, even if students in primary school also can let you know this. If you want to get healthy, you got to exercise and you got to eat well, right? So, uh, but... But why does most people uh, stumble upon their own uh, upon their own uh, azam, right? It's because it's not. It is not because they do not know what to do, but it's more like they don't have this environment that is going to push them to achieve the results that they wanted to achieve, right? I'm not sure if you've heard this story about this shark right here. Okay, so this shark. Um, it grew up depending on the kind of environment that it was put in. So this shark, uh, if you put it inside an aquarium, so let's say there's, there's a baby shark, right? And then uh, the aquarium is, imagine that it's just like this length, right? So the shark will grow up to the size of that aquarium. But the same shark, if you like throw it into the ocean where there's like endless endless limits where it gets to explore so many things, it gets to uh, learn so many new things. We, by having such greater environment, we are allowing this shark to expand itself even more, to grow even bigger. Okay, So I'm giving you this kind of analogy because this too was something that I wish I had learned while I was in, uh, while I was studying. Because indeed, environment is greater than willpower. And let me just show you uh, something that um, I think maybe uh, for me, for me, it's a, uh, it's a milestone. It's a personal milestone. Okay. So if you look at if you look at these screenshots earlier, uh, twenty twenty, earlier twenty twenty one, I've joined this challenge called Videos Challenge. Okay, the reason why I joined in the first place is that I just wanted to find myself a new skill to look forward to. You know, I feel like um, other than accounting and also in niche, what else can I do? So I just uh, randomly joined this kind of challenge. 
So the challenge was about uh, completing uh, marketing videos in under 21 days. So by, by, the time, by the time that the challenge reached 21 days, I will be able to have 21 marketing videos done. So that was the challenge it is all about. Okay, so um, now that I, I was being given the materials, to, to be fair, okay, I was give, being given the materials on a daily basis. So day one, you do this. Day two, you do this. Day three, you do this. Okay, I was being given the materials. I was, um, I wouldn't say being mentored, but I've got the motivation in the first place. But let me just tell you this, right? Along the way, I did feel like giving up. And in fact, I did give up for a week. Okay, I didn't like complete um, the whole thing in time. Okay, so I was having the hard time to actually um, complete stuff uh, because of some personal issues, basically. So uh, I'm trying. I'm going to try to relate this with the environment because what I had at the point of time is a great number of friends who are very supportive, who actually got me going. Um, when I say that I am actually having hard time to continue going on in this challenge. And these kind of people, they have these nice warm words that actually give me the fuel I needed to keep me going. And eventually, after 21 days, I was um, able to like complete the whole challenge. And the fun part is that um, other than getting myself, you know, things that I got, it's not only the 21 days videos challenge. The, the other thing that I actually grow out of this challenge is that I was able to unlock a different set of skills which I am actually uh, utilizing to, um, to, 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 to present myself in social media, basically. Right? So throughout this challenge, I've learned to do videos editing. I've learned to speak in front of a camera. I've learned to utilize microphone. And in fact, the reason why... Uh, I think I'm, I was able to do this kind of presentation today is was due to the foundation that I've got from this kind of challenge itself. Okay. So this would be something that I've uh, that I would really love somebody to tell me when I was um, before I graduated because this is something that is huge actually. All right. So we uh, uh, because I couldn't see every, any everybody here. Can you guys just let me know in the chat section if you guys are still here? Uh, type in, mm, type in, type in, type in here if you guys are still here. Okay, you guys are still here. Thank you very much for responding. I'm very scared that I am like literally talking to Christina only. So because if that is the case, then I feel like maybe I should like personally go and see Christina at UITM. Oh, oh, are you guys still in UITM or are you guys are uh, like um, doing things online? Oh, okay. All right, never mind, never mind. All right, so we are going to move forward to live session four. Live session, pulak dah, live lesson four. Um, time is more precious than um, diamonds or gold. Okay, so this is going to get uh, a bit, a bit, a bit... Um, it's like going back. Okay. Time is actually more precious than diamonds or gold. So this is something that I've learned recent, I wouldn't say recently, uh, throughout my, uh, based on my seven years of um, experience. Time is actually more precious than diamonds or gold. Okay. The analogy is quite simple, basically. So imagine that the ring that I'm wearing right now, this is gold, right? So this is gold. If I somehow lost this ring, if you are telling me that time is gold or diamond, so if I am losing this ring, I would still be able to find uh, the replacement. Okay? I won't be able to get this exact ring, but I would still be able to find the replacement. I boleh cari ganti dia. Kan boleh cari ganti dia. Okay? I can still go out, find some money, and buy myself a new ring. And same goes to diamonds. Same goes to diamonds. Even if I lost diamonds, a hundred thousand K, banyak betul beli aku kan beli diamond hundred K pula. Hundred thousand uh, worth of diamonds. If I lost it, I would still 
well, technically, generally speaking, I would still be able to work and find the money and accumulate enough money to get myself another diamond. All right. But time, once you've lost it, you would not be able to get it back. Regardless the amount of money, regardless the amount of resources that you have at the moment to trade it with. Okay, so um, there are certain uh, there are certain scenarios in life that uh, causes me to have this deep thinking about time, <coughs> and then one of the reason is due to this. Okay, so back in uh, when I was serving at IBM Damansara, uh, I got married at uh, twenty sixteen December. And then uh, at the point of time, I was still serving IBM. Okay, I was still serving IBM as a financial analyst. Um, after about two months that I got married, uh, my family and I lost my youngest brother, the one who sat in the middle. Yes, he was about to turn sixteen in like ten days of time. So we lost him uh, due to an accident. So this is when I just realized uh, that time is actually precious. This is the, this is the moment where I actually uh, got the the hidayah, like I would say, that time is more precious than diamonds or gold. It's actually priceless. You cannot put values on time because once you lost it, you won't be able to get it back. Uh, so what I'm trying to say here is that while you still got the time, then you better make the most out of that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, madam. Uh, so while you still got the time, you gotta be able to find yourself what would be the best thing to do with your precious time. Because remember, once you lost it, you won't be able to get it back. As for this case, as for my as for as for my family, we only got for about um, almost sixteen years with our youngest um, family members. And then we knew that his time is up and we no longer have any chance, anything in the world to trade um, the time. We, don't even, we won't even have another extra one minute once the time is up. Once the time is up, you, we won't e you can't even pay one minute with uh, a million dollar USD. You can't even trade the world for one minute. So I hope you're getting this kind of message um, because uh, I, I honestly feel like this is genuinely important. Okay? We would only be able to learn this uh, through experience. And for some people, we learn through personal experience. And for some other people, we learn through other people's experience. So um, let's move on. Life lesson five. We deserve a second chance. So this is something that um, I would really love to talk about. So back in IBM, when I was um, serving as a financial analyst, um, because at that point, after, okay, let me just give you something. Uh, uh, at the point I'm graduating, uh, I'm bragging myself a little bit here, okay? I'm bragging myself a little bit, although I'm not even sure if I should brag about it, but I'm just bragging. Okay, I'm bragging. You guys know what bragging is about? I nak belaga sikit lah, basically kan, she. Anyway, uh, so I graduated my degree with, um, but, but, uh, but pay attention to it because I'm letting, to let you know how this kind of bragging backfires me. Okay, so uh, I graduated my degree with a pointed 3.74, which I thought, okay lah, okay macam, okay lah kan, degree accounting UITM kot, 3.74, first class kot kan, macam okay kan. So uh, with that cert, uh, I was able to gain myself the position at IBM as a financial analyst, which I feel like, okay, sure, I like, um, it's not bad, it's not bad, it's good, you know, I, 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 I was in Perlis and then I was able to get a job. Damansara nak pergi Damansara ni, nak pergi kerja kat Damansara, right? So uh, I went. Uh, and my first week was awesome because it was just that orientation week, boot camp, got to have fun. And then they, they gave us names like IBMer. So it gave us some sense of belongingness to the company. 
right? It gave us some sense of belongingness to the company that I feel like, oh, I am an IBMer. I gotta be cool. I gotta be able to contribute to the uh, to the to the company, to the organization. I'm gonna perform really well because I'm a very good student. Mm. Okay. And then after the orientation. Uh, I was able to sit with one of my predecessor. Predecessor tu macam kita panggil orang yang nak pass dia punya kerja dekat kita lah. So I was the successor and that person, that lady was a was my predecessor. Okay. So my pretty, uh, we call her pretty lah. My pretty, uh, she was moving to a different position, different company. And her time, and the time that I had with her was about two weeks time. Of which I thought, oh, okay, boleh kot. Sempat lah belajar dua minggu ni kan. <coughs> Little did I know that by thinking so, I have actually be, um, I have actually put myself in a situation that's um, that I, I would I would regret later on. Okay, so uh, we did the transition. So she passed me whatever kind of uh, transition that is required for me to run that that role as a financial analyst. <coughs> and then, to be honest, I I. I was not able to actually grasp the understanding of doing it. Masa dia buat transition tu, I was feeling like, um, kenapa benda ni macam ni? Eh? Kenapa benda ni macam ni? Aku macam tak mana belajar pun benda ni. Kenapa dia macam, uh, dia, dia, dia download daripada mana ni? Kenapa guna Excel pun dia boleh download ni? Kenapa dia, you know, I've got so many questions. But due to the time constraint, and I'm owning this mistake as well, and due to my personal mistake that I don't have the gut to ask why. So I let myself to be in confusion, and then after she left, I got into my first call. Now you gotta understand, the IBM ni dia ada banyak branch, uh, bukan banyak branch, dia ada banyak like uh, we have like IBM Malaysia, we have IBM Indonesia, we have IBM Singapore, we have IBM India, we have IBM Philippines, and we are connected to one another through um, through AT and T. Basically, uh, macam ni lah, macam Webex ni. Um, at the point of time, we are we have been using Webex phone, and it was prior, prior all this COVID thing. Uh, during while in 2015, we are already utilizing this, and the employees are able to work from home, and it was uh, and I thought it was cool, you know, to be able to work from home. Because semua orang macam kalau nak pergi office dia kena bangun pagi, <laughs> kena bangun pagi, bersiap-siap. While we, on the other hand, just have to wake up, but tak yah mandi, tak apa, gonyo-gonyo, tekan on. And we are able to work from home, which I find cool, which I thought was cool at that point of time. But um, turns out during my first call, because that was my first call, kan? So I had my team lead inside because they thought uh, maybe I need a teman lah. So the person that was on call with me was a project manager, a project manager from. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's either from Philippine or Singapore. I think it's from it was from Singapore, good. Okay. And then uh, I did what I've been told to. Uh, my my pretty told me it's okay lah. When when the time come, you just present this one. You open up this sheet, right? And then you just tell the manager, okay, from column A, from column A to column B, this this represent what. From row A to row C, this represents what? So I did the very same thing without even understanding what it meant. So I was being asked by the manager, by the project manager, the Singaporean project manager himself, uh, he, he asked me a question, but I can't even recall what the question is all about because I was too nervous because I don't understand stuff, right? So um, I wasn't able to answer. And the fun part is that he was telling he, he told me this. I feel that like you are not competent enough to carry on this job. Uh, so I really recommend you to uh, get some assistance from your team lead. I was like, damn, that was so painful. Sakitnya hati. Dia bukan sakit sebab marah tau. Dia rasa macam, I feel like at that point of time, it was a total embarrassment to me. Yeah, because um, this project manager was literally told me, uh, and I uh, kind of translate that message as me being not good enough, right? How could I, UITM graduates, first, sorry, pagi panjang sikit, first class UITM graduates, dapat position as a financial analyst, tak boleh nak explain benda tu, 
And then I got somebody told me that I was not competent. Macam tak layak. Macam basically I I I, I interpret it as tak layak lah. Tak layak untuk bawa role itu. So my uh, self-esteem crushed immediately. Shatter. Dia macam berkecah-kecah. Jatuh berkecah sekali dengan linangan air mata. Yes, tuan-tuan dan perempuan. Yes, I was crying at the point of time. So... Um, And then I um, and then the expectation was that I'm going to meet that person again next month. So knowing that I will be meeting that person again next month caused me a huge anxiety. You know, it was it was it was a stressful moment that I was I was thinking aku nak kena jumpa lagi dia ni next month. How do I even understand? I can't even like make sense about what all these things is all about. And then Um, I went to see my manager and I'm trying to get to take myself a shortcut. What was the shortcut? To resign. Yes. Uh, so when I got in trouble, uh, at the point of time, I got in trouble. So what did I think about? Uh, this place is not for me. I am not fit to be in this kind of environment. I don't feel like I, dis- I, I should be doing this. Maybe I should just go back for this and do you know things, whatever that I'm good at. So I gave up. I went to see my manager at the point of time. Her name was Carol. Carol, um, may I please have um, some discussion with you? I really need this discussion session. So she was like, oh, okay, come over. Uh, and then I told her immediately that I wanted to resign. And then she was like, why? Because I was literally just two weeks in. Two weeks in and already wanted to resign. Yes, two weeks in too. And then uh, I told her what happened and I told her, her her my feelings and I told her what happened to me because I thought maybe after that uh, I should take myself um, calm down, balik rumah, relax, kan. Uh, but throughout the coming weeks, I was too, uh, uh, I was not able to handle the kind of anxiety that I got. I was, I believe I was in a depressed mood. Uh, I got myself in my room. I got, I got back from work. I got myself in my room. And I was literally doing this. And I was like uh, telling myself that I'm not good. I'm not good. I'm not fit for this position. I should go back. Should I try? No, I shouldn't. Because if I try, and I then people will know that I'm going to suck again. I was a good student, but why wasn't I performing? Doing this. Why, was I, why, why can't I do good? Why can't I understand? So I was in that depressed mode for like a week and I had myself on some pills by pills. I mean paracetamol lah. So, but I, I macam got, uh, I got myself fever. Dia macam kat, uh, at the point of time, I, I got too stressed that I caught myself fever. Faham tak? <laughs> Dia macam stress sangat yang sampai tiba-tiba demam, sampai minggu makan ubat pun tak hilang-hilang demam tu. So I got myself on a, an, on a whole pack, bukan pack lah, satu papan uh, Panadol tu seminggu tu. Taknya hilang-hilang demam tu. And I decided, okay, tak apa, aku kena jumpa juga my manager and told her that uh, what kind of troubles that I'm having. And then, um, she told she told me uh, this this exact phrase. Nadira, why don't you give yourself another chance? Nadira, why don't you give yourself another chance? She was very calm. She She listened to me. And she told me this exact uh, word. We deserve a second chance. And then uh, at that point of time, I was like, ah, tama, tama. I don't want the second chance. I know even if I got, what kind of sec- second chance are you offering me? And then she told me, there's an opening in another team that they are looking for a chargeback analyst. So instead of financial analyst, uh, the position was for chargeback analyst. So chargeback analyst role is like uh, billing lah. Okay, buat billing untuk satu projek Singapore ni. Sebab uh, satu projek Singapore ni besar, so dia kena ada dua orang. Dia ada FA dia, financial analyst dia, dengan dia ada chargeback dia. Sebab FA tu tak sempat nak buat billing-billing tu. So the, the the contract was huge and dia perlukan dua orang. So Carol told me that uh, maybe if you try this different role, you can eventually adapt yourself. At that point of time, I was I, I did start to... Uh, to question myself, should I take that chance? Should I? What if I, even if I take that chance and I still suck? What if I still not able to perform regardless if I got that chance or not? 
And then um, I took a moment. Uh, she told me that it's okay. You can get yourself. I- I'll give you some time. You go back home. You give a think. You give a thought about it, and you let me know your decision tomorrow. So I got back home, shower, okay, and then I was thinking, should I take? Should I take this? What if I suck? What if I got back again? What if I uh, perform badly this time again? So now I perform badly in two areas. Financial FA pun sucks. Being charged by analyst pun sucks juga. So um, then I go back home and then I was thinking to myself, okay, maybe what I need is a second chance. And then I grabbed this, uh, the opportunity. I went to a different team, uh, get interviewed um, to the manager and get onto that position. I just did the uh, charge by analyst for one whole year. And then guess what? After that, I finally got myself into a financial analyst position. Yes, uh, I took my time. Um, I took my time learning. I took my time understanding that everybody is learning at their own face. You know, there are times. Pernah tak rasa yang macam masa sekolah dulu, uh, masa kita belajar math tu dia rasa macam susah sangat. But then when you look back at the same questions now, you feel like apa sah ini aku rasa macam susah sangat dulu lah. Sebenarnya senang je. You know, some people, for most people, we are learning at our own face. Ada orang dia cepat pick up. So, dia belajar sekali, dia terus pick up. As for myself, I had acknowledged that I needed certain time, this uh, amount of time in order for me to understand things. Okay. So, um, I got myself that second chance. I grab it. Um, and then here I am. <laughs> Because I kept giving myself second chance in doing things, even if I failed miserably in the first place. Okay, uh, so actually failure is not it's not a bad thing. I mean, failure is actually good. Uh, there was a story about this um, about a father and their children. Uh, let me know in the comment if you would like to hear about this story. Type in story if you would like to hear about it, or else if I don't see like any response, then I just go to the next slides. Let me know in the comment story if you would like to hear about this um, uh, st- story about um, a father and the and the children. Okay, sorry. All right. So uh, I've heard about this story from IG Reels. Okay, so that's the fun part about social media these days. Uh, you can find good stuff on social media if you choose to. So there was this lady she had telling us, telling her audience that. Her father was somebody that encourages mistake. He encourages mistake. And she said, he told her and her younger brothers that um, wh- whenever they got back from school every day, he would literally ask them, okay, uh, kids, what kind of mistakes that you have gotten yourself into today? So, the anak-anak dia bagi tahu lah, oh, hari ni, uh, I nak cucuk dekat dalam, I nak cucuk dekat dalam something tu. But then, I put my hands. Right, those are the kind of mistakes, and then but, uh, and depending depending on the age, mistakes, uh, depending on how you describe mistakes, juga how your perspective is towards mistakes, it could be different from one individual to another. So, uh, anak anak dibalik, and then dia bapa dia tanya, um, hari ni buat silap apa? Bapa dia tak tanya hari ni belajar apa. Bapa dia cuma tanya hari ni buat silap apa. So basically, dia boleh buat uh, Facebook page buat silap apa hari ni. <laughs> So, Bapak tanya, hari ni buat silap apa? And then, there were days, this lady said, and there were days that um, her and her brothers macam tak adalah buat silap apa pun hari ni. And then, it, Bapak dia akan tunjukkan rasa yang macam pain. So, it kind of give the message to this lady and her uh, brothers that in order to make their father happy, to make their dad happy, Every day, they got to make some mistake. Whatever kind of mistake it is. It could be they spill the water. It could be like um, they, they, they try to fire something and then just shot something else. It could be um, things that they said is okay to say, it, but apparently it hurt somebody else. Because why? Mistakes are actually one of our best teachers. Okay. Because basically, f- for most people, we we are afraid, including myself, we are afraid of making mistakes. Uh, because uh, actually, our instinct is to be, you know, perfect in front of people. We don't want people to see us 
uh, with flaws. Maksudnya kita tak nak orang tengok kita uh, ada kekurangan. Kita tak orang tengok kita. Macam kalau boleh tengok kita tu nampak perfect je. Right? Uh, so unfortunately, bukan unfortunately, but apparently uh, mistakes are actually the best lessons that we could ever uh, gotten in our life. Why? Let me tell you why. So mistakes are good because of two things. Uh, oh yeah. Number one, I mean, sorry. Um, mistake is not exactly bad, right? and you need to keep trying because of two things. Okay, so when you try new things, okay, in order for you to make mistake, you gotta try new things, right? So the probability is that you would probably success, got success, or you could fail. And depending on on your um, on your judgment on what fail is. You could fail sikit-sikit. Dia macam, okay lah. Dia gagal tapi gagal tu sikit-sikit lah. Tolerable lah. Ataupun gagal dengan jayanya. Fail miserably. And depending on your judgment. Yeah? So the, the outcome of trying is you could either succeed or you could either making mistakes. You fail. Basically you fail. Uh, the good thing about trying is that if you succeed, okay fine. Happy for you. Then you know that these things work for you. Right? But if you fail, uh, this is another shift of mindset again, lah, basically, right? So if you fail, uh, it is still good and it's actually very good because you know that that thing, because you know two things, right? You know that number one, that thing doesn't work for you or number two, where you keep trying again but you're using different way. You know, sometimes when you try to go, uh, you, to do some things, you're going to cara A, tapi you fail. And then you try to think, kenapa aku tak jadi benda ni? And then you try different way. And when you try different way, that is another step of trying. And there are still probability of you uh, failing or getting the success. But still, uh, regardless, the way, regardless the output, you are actually learning in your phase of life. Okay. So when we talk about learning, uh, giving ourselves a second chance, uh, this is something that I thought... Uh, we should all know that I think I would appreciate when I've learned, if I am able to learn about this earlier. Uh, because I understand that whenever we are, that we had been grading ourselves and, and, and it became part of our conscience because daripada kita sekolah lagi, we have been like putting ourselves into grades, kan? Uh, I understand that we need some sort of assessment and all that. But uh, there are something about this assessment that give us this conscious um, thoughts that we had to achieve A in everything. So if you are failed, then that's a good, then that, that's a bad thing. So kita initially kita takut tengok warna merah and uh, the best tengok warna hijau ke warna biru as long as benda tu selain merah. Okay. So when you see red marks or you see deduction, kita interpret dia as a bad thing. You know, as a bad thing, as something that um, that is not favorable to us. So now, uh, I'm asking you, I'm telling you, I am giving you this, uh, another shift in mindset. That even if you fail, even if you got red, even if you got deduction, that is not actually a failure. There's an opportunity for you to relearn again and find out things that actually work for you. Okay? Uh... Okay, let me know uh, in the comment section, are you guys still here? Because I've been like storytelling, so full of myself, perasan tak sanggah dah ni, aku duduk cerita macam-macam. Are you guys still here? Let me know in the comment if you guys still here, tell me in here. Okay, thank you for responding. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's move on. Lesson six. Now, um, let me ask you an, an open question. Okay, when you hear about sales and marketing, can you type in the checks in the chat uh, below? What do you think about sales and marketing? What do you think about sales and marketing? It could be bad. It could be uh, people forcing other people to buy stuffs. It could be um, people who only thinks about money. Okay, I just want to check with you guys. Are you guys hearing this uh, machine in the background? Or, or it's tolerable? Okay, I'm assuming it's tolerable. 
Okay, uh, because there are people who are like uh, tengah duk potong rumput pula time time ni. Okay, but then there's nothing that I can do. It's out of my control anyway. Okay, so when we talk about sales and marketing, most people perceive sales as something that is bad. Something that uh, bila kita cakap pasal sales person, kita akan cakap orang tu macam, dia tu nak duit kita je. You know, these people are only chasing after our money. And marketing is like a way that you just show your best sides while ignoring the bad sides. Marketing is, uh, this is, this is not the, the true definition, yeah? I, I'm just um, giving you some insight about what people normally think when it comes to sales and marketing macam tu. So in the real world, bila you go to work one day, uh, and then you got people coming after you, hey, jom lah masuk um, benda ni, jom lah invest here, or jom lah sign up this program, jom lah buat benda ni. Eventually, you would have this kind of mindset that uh, orang ni dia nak duit aku je ni. Dia ni pada alah dia tu buat marketing, dia nak cerita macam benda bagus lah. Benda tak bagus mana dia nak cerita. Okay. Uh, orang ni dia nak duit kita je. Dia tak ada je nak, nak bantu kita sangat pun. Dia nak duit kita je. I mean those are the kind of um, common misconception about sales and marketing. And I too had the same uh, thoughts until last year. <laughs> until last year. So uh, actually, uh, like I've mentioned before, these are the kind of lessons that I've learned past throughout my past seven years. Uh, so I'm pinpointing whatever it is that I feel like important. Uh, and I feel like delivering these messages to you as my younger brothers and sisters. Sales and marketing is, act, rather than something that is bad, it's actually a responsibility to everyone. Okay, why? Let me just give you this kind of logic, okay? <clears throat> so now, um, we have to acknowledge this one particular thing. Everybody is actually gifted with something. For sure. Mesti ada. Setiap orang, dia akan ada kelebihan tersendiri. Dia akan ada dia punya specialty strength dia. Okay, we are not looking at the weaknesses. We are looking at the strength. So, um, let's say as for myself, one of my strength, one of my special area is um, investing in unit trust. So, let's take that one particular point. Investing in unit trust. And I have the knowledge about investing in unit trust. And if I were to keep shut about it, and, 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 and on top of that, other than uh, having that kind of knowledge, I too have the capabilities, the ability to deliver, to convey this kind of messages to people in public. So I have that uh, knowledge and I have that capacity to deliver message to people. The way I think about it is, if I were to keep things quiet to myself, I am actually being a, being a selfish person. okay? Because I know about investment, uh, and I know that people are actually uh, giving attention, okay, that people can actually benefit from uh, investing in unit trust. And I know that uh, if I were to share this kind of knowledge with other people, there would be uh, people who actually benefit from my sharing. But then if I choose to, choose to stay quiet, then I am actually um, being a selfish human being. <laughs> you know, you, you have something, but you don't want to share it. You have something, but you don't want to let other people know. So um, basically, in doing when we see sales and marketing, and, and, and I believe that you guys, because you guys are in part four, right? Uh, do we still have entrep ENT paper? If, if there is, then type in ENT. I'm assuming there is still, uh, yeah, there is still ENT paper, then. Entrepreneurial paper. Yes, um, yes, part five, part five. Yes, part five, kan? Yeah. So, um... When I was doing ENT, because I, I still remember, I, I was a student myself. So my focus at that point of time is just to get an A for ENT. Sebab I perceive at that subject is too macam senang je. Uh, macam I baca je. Lepas tu dia, dia macam logic lah. Logic ni kalau buat marketing ni apa? You nak, you nak bagi tahu dekat orang, blah, blah, blah. It's just kind of something that's logic lah. That is how I perceive ENT subject at that point of time. But now that I've learned it, hard way, 
and uh, which is why I guess I, I appreciate it even more now. Sales and marketing is not a bad thing. It's actually a responsibility to first your first to yourself, and then to everyone. Okay, uh, I have heard about this story uh, about somebody. He's he's actually a marketer. His name is Russell Brunson. Uh, do you mind? Do do I have the permission to like tell you this story? Do I have the permission? Let me know. Uh, go on by typing in "go on" in the chat session if I have the permission to share with you this one particular story. Okay, thank you. So there was this one marketer. His name is Russell Brunson. So if you go on Google, you will find out that he's the co-founder of ClickFunnels. So ClickFunnels ni macam satu tempat yang macam uh, entrepreneurs, geng-geng entrepreneurs ni, dia guna ClickFunnels untuk buat dia punya website where people go inside the web and then they make the purchase and dia ada rantaian, rangkaian dia untuk untuk orang yang nak masuk dekat website tu lah basically kan. So uh, Russell Brunson was one of the co-founder of ClickFunnels. So you guys can go on Google after this. So when Russell and his wife got married, they were having issues, uh, they, they tried to to get babies tapi they were having apa katanya mengalami masalah kesuburan lah okay, they were having uh, yeah they were having that issues and they were living in this town they were living in this town and they do not know what to do they don't know where to go they don't know um, who advice who whose advice should they look up for okay and so until one day Russell was going through this one ex okay ada satu iklan Iklan ni dicakap rawatan kesuburan. And apparently, rawatan kesuburan itu, oh, I remember, fertility fertility treatment. Fertility treatment. So, the fertility treatment is actually within that town itself. Tapi kita, macam contohlah, ada kedai baru naik dekat uh, Taman Sena contohnya kan. We were, I, I'm assuming that most of you have been to Kanga. Okay, katakanlah ada satu kedai ni baru naik dekat Taman Sena. Without marketing, people won't know that you are there ready to help uh, your clients to achieve the results that they want to achieve. Okay? So katakanlah, doktor yang buat rawatan kesuburan tadi tu, uh, doktor, uh, so dia ada kepakaran selama berapa tahun kan? So dia tahu kebanyakan masalahnya macam mana, dia tahu macam mana nak rawat, eh, to increase the probability of a couple to get... Uh, to raise chance to get pregnant, okay. So Russell went to see this uh, this person, this doctor, Russell and his wife, and they eventually um, they are blessed with six children years later. <laughs> so um, he shared this story um, with the people. Actually, I think I saw his video on YouTube. Uh, that they uh, cakap macam ni je. Uh, it hit me one day that if the doctor decided to stay quiet dia tak nak guna pun kepakaran dia tu dia kata okey aku tahu je macam mana nak buat rawatan kesuburan tapi tak naklah bagi tahu kat orang um, dia kata kalau doktor tu buat macam tu then him and his wife may probably not even get the results which is which would be the children lah kan uh, that they wanted to achieve okey kalau the doctor decided that marketing is a bad thing Taking money in exchange of your service. Sales is like, uh, we, we are actually exchanging something lah. So, kalau kita ada produk, and we are exchanging that, biasanya dengan apa? Kita selalunya tak tukarlah dengan kain, dengan barang, semua tu kan. Kebiasaannya kita tukar dengan duit ringgit. Okay, fiat money, money, paper money kan. Orang tu, sales is actually an exchange of something. So, you have product, you have service, you bagi ke orang, and in return, that we mutually agree, kita sama-sama setuju, that person gives you this amount of money in return. So, kalau lah doktor ni, dia fikir kata, tak nak lah. Kalau I bagi, kalau I buat macam tu, macam nak ambil duit orang. You know, kalau kalau I buat marketing, it's like showing the good thing about myself je. If that does, if that person decides so, then maybe, right, ni rasa yang cakap eh. So, rasa cakap, maybe dia dan juga wife dia still struggle with infertility issues. So, the point that I'm trying to say that, Um, subjek ENT tu dia bukan uh, saja-saja you know there are purpose behind it and i wish i had known about this before yes ladies and gentlemen i hope i had known about this before 
sales and marketing is actually your responsibility. Sebab you imagine, katakanlah you tahu, you pandai main game. You pandai main game. And you specifically know, yang kalau you main game, bagi game, contoh game apa? Eh? Um, 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 uh, apa of Thrones tu? I forgot about the games thing. Games of Thrones, alah. Tak apalah, ambil je lah satu game. Let's say you you are very good in this one particular game. In this particular online game. And you know one of the secret to like master this. But you dah master the game. And you know the secrets that will help more people to to end the game. Like to conquer the game. And then you choose, you have the choice. I mean to keep quiet. Or you have the choice to let people know that you know how to conquer the game. Okay, so if you choose to keep quiet, then tak apalah, you sorang-sorang je lah, master benda tu. Tapi, if you choose to share your expertise with other people, with the mindset, with the thinking that you know this sharing will be beneficial, akan bermanfaat untuk orang itu, uh, then in a way, you are actually doing your responsibility towards the society. Padahal contoh yang kak nak guna tadi tu, it's just a game. Itu kalau game. And there are many other areas in life that eventually will lead down to this one particular uh, moment. Sales and marketing is actually for everybody to learn. Because everybody has got things to share and kita hidup dekat dalam community, within the society, it's like we are sharing our gift. You know, you ada your own expertise. Each and every one of us ada kita punya own expertise. Kepakaran, kemahiran, kelebihan. So, we are actually sharing benda ni. Cuma, kalau kita nampak atas paper secara transaksinya, kita nampak benda tu macam change. Macam kita beli baju, kan? Orang tu dia expert. Dia punya expertise, kemahiran dia ialah um, menjual baju, buat baju. So, kita minta dia buat baju kita and we are paying her in return of her knowledge and expertise. Not only on the product itself. Okay? So, uh, this is why I said uh, sales and marketing is a responsibility to everybody. And uh, due to this, um, I would say, awareness as well. Sebab Kak Nat pun dah mulai memahami benda ini. Walaupun ENT tu, subjek tu ambil masa uh, part 4. Part 4 ke part 5 dulu tu? Part 4 kot. Uh, sebab ENT tu subjek yang ambil masa, masa, masa tiba-tiba yang ramai pula orang temp tu. Dia macam 4 flat. <laughs> so, ENT kalau tak silap masa part 4 during my time. Okay, so um, uh, so realizing this, um, I myself had decided that I should um, be exposing myself uh, more on public. And what's the best way to expose myself to public? Selain daripada um, through invitation, you know, giving out talks, speech like this, uh, I mean sharing like this, is through social media. Because basically, literally, everybody have got at least one phone in hand. Um, yes, so it then dia adalah satu uh, tools yang even more powerful than television these days. Sebab ads is literally everywhere. Uh, you buka YouTube, tengah shot, layar lagu. Would you like to have an experience in a mindset shifting? Uh, macam itu. Contohlah contoh. Ads kan? Um, so, what I'm trying to say is that now that people have phone in hand, uh, smartphones in hand, okay, uh, you actually have a bigger platform to let people know what your specialties is all about. Okay, You ada cara, you boleh guna platform apa, macam-macam social media, macam-macam social media platform. Alright, thank you. And then we have what? Instagram, Facebook, and these days, it seems like people are flooding into TikTok lah for some reasons. Uh, well, I get it. Sebab TikTok punya channel, video ni kalau ada pun dia pendek, 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 pendek. Because we don't have time nak tengok lecture yang panjang-panjang, sejam setengah, 90 minutes macam ni. Kita tak ada masa. And kalau boleh, kita nak orang tu cakap, oh, sebenarnya teknik untuk menjawab soalan berapa? Ada lima. Satu, dua, tiga, empat, lima. Okay, done. Shh. Scroll up. Uh, five ways that you can do to uh, get yourself more money. Satu, dua, tiga, empat, lima. Tiktok nak atas. Lepas tu, tiba-tiba ada logik. And then another, and then another uh, video TikTok lah ni. You know, TikTok punya ni, uh, algorithm is like super fast. But you get the chance to tell people what is it that you are doing right now. And 
when people start to acknowledge you, uh, not only on TikTok lah, basically kan banyak platform lagi, you boleh tulis dekat Facebook. Depends on what your preference is lah. Kalau you suka menulis, maybe you you ought to find uh, Facebook as a platform uh, to market your expertise. Uh, gitu. Okay, so I for myself, I've got my own uh, YouTube channel and I've got my own TikTok. Where, tapi dekat TikTok lah banyak sebab yang tu senang nak edit. <laughs> Because I am the one doing the editing and the recording myself. Um, one main show lah orang kata, for now. Maybe in future, I'm going to have my own team, mana tahu kan. Kukul lah, ada siapa-siapa nak join team, ada siapa-siapa nak join team, tak nak ada. <laughs> Alright, the last one. Find your own balance between cost versus values. Now what is cost versus values? Uh, I'm going to put it into these ways. Um, kalau dekat dalam investment, dalam investment you need trust lah contohnya kan. Ada orang tanya, sebab bila kita invest, macam contoh orang invest melalui agent. Orang invest melalui agent. Macam kat NAC, kat NAC masih kita agent. So dia ada UTMC, company tu ada agent, ada pelabur. So bila bila kita ada tiga tiga point ni kan, um, pelabur, agent dan juga company ataupun fund tu sendiri, dia ada charge dia in between. So normally uh, UTMC charge up to 5%. Depends lah dekat company tu dia nak charge berapa persen untuk service charge. So selalunya orang tanya, kalau I nak invest sendiri dekat dalam dana ni tak boleh lah. Sebab kalau I guna agent nanti I kena charge. Well, the answer is yes, you can. You may and you can. Okay. So kalau kata kita invest sendiri, biasanya kita tak perlu tanggung lah dia punya charge tu. Uh, charge untuk agent tu lah biasanya. So dia akan ada juga charge tapi dia macam maybe 1.5% macam tu. Kalau kata kita guna agent, dia macam 4.8 to 5%. So ada difference tu kan, 3 plus percent something in the, in the middle tu. Okay, tak ada masalah. You can choose to invest on your own. But, uh, so here comes the cost versus value soon. So the reason why you tak nak uh, menggunakan orang berkenaan, tak nak guna agent untuk invest is because of they want to reduce on the cost. Okay, so they got a cost reduction of 5, uh, assume 3.3% lah, 3.3%. But, By uh, by investing on their own, they are also assuming the risk on their own. Faham tak? So maksudnya sekarang ini, kalau macam kita guna agents, then agent himself or herself are going to help you with your own investment. Okay. So now let's assume that you don't have an investment background. And you kata, tak apalah, I nak invest sendiri. I tak nak guna agent pun. I nak save the sales charge. And literally tak ada masalah. You can carry on. But you should know that you two are assuming risk to your own portfolios, to your own self. Sebab, uh, now that you are on your own, you have to decide on your own um, whether which fund that you want to invest. What are the best time for you to sell? Um, which time should you buy? Which time should you top up? And so on and so forth. And you have to uh, get to know about the uh, market as well. You have to have the knowledge about the market as well. Why? Because investment have huge correlative to to the market. Macam sekarang ni, um, perang uh, Russia, Ukraine, Russia punya war uh, is still not over yet, kan? So it does have signific significant impact onto the market. So it does, when, when market is affected, then it does have significant effect onto your investment. And then again, if you are on, on your own, um, then you have to assume the risk is yourself. Okay, so now, dia ada dua benda kat sini. You nak assume the risk to yourself lah, atau you nak save on the uh, sales charge. You kata, okay, I nak save on the sales charge, then you have to assume the risk yourself. Kalau kata, tak apalah, I perlukan khidmat nasihat, then you are exchanging the risk tu by paying uh, an amount of money lah, basically. You exchange amount of money. So this is what I meant with finding your own balance between cost versus values. Now let me give you another example. Contoh lah, contoh. Kita bagi contoh uh, fast food. Fast food, okay. So fast food. <coughs> you kata, um, I'm eating fast food. I'm having fast food because it's um, cheaper and also it's easier. So I save time. I don't have to cook. Okay, so there are three to four uh, uh, justification on consuming fast food. And then, Uh, so we are comparing fast food versus uh, real food lah. Real food tu contoh lah you, you masak sendiri. Sebab I tak nak masak sendiri. Sebab kalau I masak sendiri, nanti I have to spend time 
Okay, so kalau fast food kita nak kita nak reduce time. Kita nak makan sekarang ni. I, I don't have time to wait for so long. I'm busy with my life. So I just need to consume fast food on daily basis. Um, breakfast, mo- breakfast, lunch and and uh, minum petang and also dinner. I nak consume fast food sahaja. Can you? The answer is can. Now the question is, can you accept the the balance, the balancing or the differences between the cost versus values? Okay, so you dah faham kalau you you consume fast food, you are actually paying with other way around. You are actually paying with something that you cannot see, which is your own health. Okay, so kalau you you rasa macam uh, uh, I nak I nak makan I nak makan fast food. So, I tak nak masak sebab I nak save time. So, you want to save time. Fine, you want to save time. But, you are also paying that time with this another thing, which is your health. So, you have to compare yourself these two things. Time or health. So, kalau you accept time, so you are going to go for fast food. Kalau you rasa, no, I am not willing to pay uh, fast food because I don't want it to de- to affect my health. So you are going to choose not to eat fast food. That's all. But still, there are two things that you are considering: the cost versus values. Okay, either you are paying uh, to reduce time, or um, you are paying with your own health. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, I'm going towards the closing. Uh, this is something that I really love to talk about too, as well. Um, sometimes there are points in life where you kind of lose yourself kind of lose yourself, you kind of not know what is it really that you wanted to do in your life. And when that time happens, go on Google and search for this quote uh, by Steve Jobs. So Steve Jobs said um, to actually uh, look back and try to connect the dots. Right, connect the dots. What are the dots means? So the dots could be some significant experience in your life. As for myself, um, I would consider experience yang dekat IBM tu, you know the story I shared earlier, IBM, and and literally all the life lessons that I have learned throughout my past seven years, after I graduate, finding yourself by connecting the dots. So I'm trying to link between these lessons that I've learned personally and also through observation from other people's experience, and I try to connect these dots. So Steve Jobs said, you cannot connect the dots looking forwards. You can only do them by looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect you in your future. So I'm going back to what I'm saying earlier. If there are times that you're feeling that you will kind of lose losing yourself, you know, sometimes you're like, apa benda lah yang aku nak buat di dalam kehidupan ku ini sebenarnya? So when you reach that stage, what you could do is you could like look back, look back, and you find out the significant moments that you had uh, passed through in your previous years of life and try to connect the dots. You know, try to link it to one another. And also, even if you try to be doing this, this is also a, a reminder, if you, even if after you try to do this and you rasa macam tak link pun satu-satu dot ni, and I'm telling you, it's okay. Okay, what you could do is to just keep moving forwards and to see if you are collecting more dots in your life. Okay, kalau you rasa macam, tak connect lah dots ni, apa benda yang ni, yang ni, yang ni, tak, tak nampak macam make sense pun, all these things. It will, because depending on the people, dip, depends on people, some people are able to connect the dots earlier. Some people are able to connect the dots at their later age of life. And some people uh, are not even able to connect the dots um, even at the end of your life. <laughs> okay, so connecting the dots is a general thingy. It's just a guide like uh, what you could do if you somehow find yourself lost, lost in the future. Uh, so uh, again, I, I think I'm going to stop my sharing at this point uh, because I believe that my time is up. Uh, if you have questions, then I would be glad to accept it. Um, if you have like concerns or you have any other questions, it could be about anything. It could be about your life. It could be about your concerns. It could be about your study. It could be about uh, your concern over career. It could be about anything. And feel free to ask me in the comment section, in the chat section. And yes, we are open. Uh, Miss Nadra, 
Yes. While waiting, while waiting for the participant, I would like to ask you a question. Mm-mm-mm. Um, when you know, you know, when we finally do something that we're afraid of to do in life successfully, mm-hmm. rather than hearing uh, words of recognition, there will be some group of people who are very close to us who will keep on pointing out every single wrongdoing, every single mistake that we have done. Rather than I know it's. It's good. I know that it's a good thing, but then, you know, at some point of life, you kind of feel like very. De- if you keep on hearing that stuff every single day, you, you, you will be very devo- demotivated, and then be like, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. What would your advice be about this matter? Thank you. That's a very beautiful question, and I have a beautiful analogy that I've learned from Ayman yesterday. <laughs> Believe me, we got the exact uh, the exact response uh, during our sharing the uh, PTS as well. Okay, so uh, the analogy that I meant is, um, Christina pernah makan ikan. Yeah, makan ikan. Ada tak pernah makan ikan yang ikan tu dirasa masing gila? Yang ni yang bukan kita tambah garam, yang ikan tu kita ambil, kita tangkap, contohlah kita ada fresh fish, uh, lepas tu kita masak, and tanpa garam pun ikan tu masing gila. Pernah tak makan? Saya tak suka makan ikan. <laughs> okay. okay, let's just assume uh, you you uh, you makan ikan lah, let's just assume. Okay, sebenarnya ikan ke ataupun mana-mana hidupan laut yang lain, kalau kita makan, dia akan ada rasa dia yang tersendiri. Dia tak akan ada rasa masing. Tapi pernah tak kita fikir, uh, air laut dia punya density, uh, dia punya tahap kemasinan itu adalah amat tinggi. ya. Dia punya kemasinan amat tinggi. Dan ikan dan segala hidupan laut yang berada dekat dalam uh, laut itu, uh, ada dekat dalam laut itu untuk tempoh jangka masa yang agak lama. But still, isi dia tu tak masing. Have you wondered why? Scientifically, scientifically, um, this kind, this uh, hidupan laut ni, hidupan laut ni, they've got themselves um, some sort of filter, okay? That walaupun uh, mereka dikelilingi environment yang uh, we are assuming that the toxic is the garam lah. Kita assume toxic is the garam. That they are being surrounded with um, those high level of sodium of garam in their life, throughout their life, they have this some sort of mechanism inside that are going to filter out those kind of negativity that eventually flushed out from the entire system individually all right so in order to be doing that um, you have to have your own system to uh, flush out those kind of negativity from your mind from yourself okay i understand it could be very uh, challenging especially if the because yesterday we got this question um I have toxic parents. Uh, so basically, the parents dia tu sendiri yang tak support dia. Dia nak buat apa pun, parents macam, tak payah lah. Dia nak buat macam mana, parents dia kata, tak payah boleh ke buat tu. So dia macam, nak buat apa-apa pun, parents tak support. Uh, and, and it's even worse, kalau macam member, kita boleh tinggal member kan? Parents kita tak boleh tinggal. And they are our parents. Okay. So, uh, again, we made them understood that as parents, Uh, once you become parents yourself, dia ada satu sense yang kick in. Yang kita rasa macam kita nak protect je anak kita tu. Kita kalau boleh tak nak anak kita sakit, tak nak anak kita susah, tak nak anak kita ter, tercedera, tak nak tersakiti hata dengan seekor nyamuk sekali pun. Kalau boleh tak nak. Kalau boleh tak nak. Itu memang insting parents yang semula jadilah. So we made them understood that itulah salah satu daripada skop pekerjaan parents. We worry all the time. Walaupun anak tu dia dah besar, anak tu dia dah pergi level mana-mana pun, walaupun the parents himself or herself is like already 70, 80 years of life, they worry. They constantly worry about you and they could be, and that could be a reason why they are being this so-called negative. Actually, they're not not exactly negative. They just don't want things to hurt you. So what you could do, kalau you were in this kind of environment, what you could do is you have to prove yourself. That you can actually do this. Sebab kadang-kadang parents, because most of the time, parents tu dia risau. Sebab dia, dia tak harap lah. Senang cakap, orang boleh kata dia tak harap lah. Kata, sekejap lagi aku biar budak ni, dia pergi sekejap lagi. Dia tersepak tu, dia tersepak tu ni. So what you could do is you could improve yourself. Make yourself look 
stronger firmer so dia kata tak apa boleh dah ni mak ayah kalau I, kalau Kak Long pergi pun uh, Kak Long dah kuat dah ni trust me have faith in me and that process takes time depending on the type of people it takes time it takes time and what you could do is to just allow yourself to go through that process and also allow your parents to go through that process and also allow those people around you to go through that process and again like I mentioned earlier even if there is Three to five percent people who literally hates you. Um, then there are still ninety five percent to ninety seven percent people who are still being respectful to you. So you just acknowledge those kind of people and leave the ones who hates you behind. That's all. Because in the end, we cannot like fulfill. We we cannot like fulfill everybody's um expectation lah. Basically, right? Uh, oh yeah, I saw a comment. Would you recommend us to invest in gold? Is it worth it? That's a very nice question. Okay. Um, as for gold, so we have a different types of instruments of investment out there. Uh, as for myself, I'm doing SD financing and also unit trust and also gold. So now, I'm giving you the comparison. So this is like a simple comparison lah, basically kan. Kalau ASB, so I'm, I'm comparing three. Okay. Ketiga-tiga instrumen ni, dia ada kekuatan dan kelebihan masing-masing dan, dan memahami bahawa setiap orang punya risk tolerance, risk appetite, uh, kemahuan uh, dan desire to achieve number. So, semua orang tak sama. So, kita kena faham instrumen tu dululah supaya kita boleh make use of the instruments to benefit us better. So, let's say we have this, this type of instruments. Kan? Kita ada ASB. And then we have uh, apa tadi? Unit trust and also gold. ASB kekuatan dia ialah harga unit dia tidak berubah. ASB kekuatan dia harga unit dia tidak berubah. Uh, unit trust pula kekuatan dia ialah kita boleh dapat capital gain. Benda tu tak ada dekat dalam ASB. Emas pula kekuatan ni. Ni I'm assuming that you you are asking about investing in physical gold lah. Eh? Physical gold. Sebab dia ada paper gold. But, but uh, the ones that people are debating these days are about the physical gold tu lah. So physical gold. Physical gold, dia punya best ialah bila kita beli, kita dapat gold. So if you are buying one, tak mahu lah. 10 gram of gold, maybe you bayar 2,000. Berapa harga emas sekarang? 275 katakan. 275 per gram. So if you buying 10 gram, so you are paying 2,750 uh, 2.75k that you are getting yourself gold. So, tu beza dia. Uh, ASB, kebaik kelebihan dia, harga unit dia tak berubah. Unit trust, uh, kelebihan dia, you boleh dapat capital gain dan you boleh dapat dividend. Uh, ASB, kita dapat dividend juga. And then yang gold, kita boleh dapat um, kita boleh dapat the gold itself. Okay. But, the difference and the, I wouldn't say weakness lah. Uh, remember that kita ada cost versus benefit, cost versus value tadi tu. So this is the 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 cost that comes together dengan kita punya choices tadi. So kalau dengan ASB, kita ada dividend. Uh, walaupun harga unit itu tidak berubah, harga unit yang tidak berubah itu sendiri ialah satu benda yang untuk sesetengah orang tak best. Sebab kalau dia invest ringgit, nanti dia jumpa ringgit je. To some people, dia best lah sebab dia macam risk free tau. But to some people, benda tu macam tak best sebab dia boleh dia just macam dapat dividend je. So dia tak ada macam extra return from it. You need trust pula, you will be able to get more, a higher return compared to ASB depending on the depending on the fund that you choose to invest in. Tapi there are risks associated with this um, uh, unit trust. Sebab kalau you, um, you boleh dapat unrealized, you boleh dapat losses lah basically. Uh, kalau macam ASB, you tak loss punya. The harga dia confirm seringgit as unit. Kalau you buat uh, unit trust, you possible loss ada possibility untuk loss. Sebab hari ni mungkin harga dia singgit. So harga dia 9 kupang. Lusa mungkin harga dia 8 kupang. Tulak mungkin harga dia 5 kupang. But you would only realize, you cuma akan merealisasikan loss itu kalau you jual unit tu pada harga yang lebih rendah lah basically. So to some people, dia tak boleh tengok harga turun-turun tu. Dia sesak nafas. So unit trust is not the invest, the, the tool for him or her, the investor. Untuk sesetengah orang yang lain pula, dia prefer gold. Sebab gold tu dia boleh pegang. Dia boleh raba-raba, dia boleh tokok, dia boleh pakai. So, dia prefer benda yang dia boleh pegang, dia nampak. Even if the price of the gold drop, dia still ada benda tu. Okay, so to answer your question, whether if it's time, uh, whether I would recommend to invest in gold, my answer would be invest in 
things that would suit your needs. Okay, kalau you suka goal and you are aware about the uh, about the about the apa about the possibility bukan the possibility about the risk dan juga tentang kelebihan dan kekurangan goal itu and you are happy with it you are willing to accept it then invest in goal kalau you are the kind of a, a person yang macam nak adventurous sikit lah you macam uh, sikit sangat lah kalau dividend ASV 5 sen lah dividend banyak sikit uh, and you are willing to take up a certain significant number of risk then you need trust maybe suitable for you tapi kalau you orang yang macam aku malas lah nak pegang gol. Sat lagi toyol masuk rumah macam mana? Sat lagi kalau orang rumah orang kena rumah, rumah kena rompak macam mana? Then you could invest yourself in ASB. Ha, so kita ada pelbagai uh, alat instrument di pasaran and these three are like super uh, yang basic punya lah. That I only know after I graduate also. So now that you know, uh, consider this as an added value to yourself uh, because I didn't know about this when I was studying literally. Okay? Uh, so I hope that answers the question. Uh, is there any, any other like questions that I should be entertaining? Macam dah tak ada lah. Oh, tak ada. What kind of investment would you advise students to make when they start their first job after graduation? Oh, okay. What kind of investment would you advise students to make when they start in their first job after graduation? So, investment ada dua. Two type of investment. Investment in term of monetary Or investment in yourself. Ada dua. Okay. Uh, so assuming. Uh, sebab you, 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 you start the first job. Okay. So kalau you baru mulakan pekerjaan. The, uh, you have these two things to consider lah. Kalau macam you dah happy. Dengan your pekerjaan. And then you feel like you are not. Uh, and you feel like you have that. Excess amount every month. And you are willing to allocate, allocate that kind of amount. Kalau you nak invest. Then you can always start with uh, ASB. Dulu, uh, and then as you climb up the ladder at, of your career, and then you started to feel like you wanted to take up a, a more adventurous in your investing portfolio, then you can always try different type of investment lah. You need trust other, go or whatever. And this is another angle that I'm letting you know. Another angle that I'm letting you know. You too could be investing in yourself. Investing in yourself maksudnya apa? You... Uh, you allocate certain number, uh, certain amount, certain portion of your salary to increase your, to upskill, to increase your skills. So basically, you 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 could be allocating, contoh lah, seratus ringgit untuk beli buku. So you read the books and you earn new knowledge. That is you investing in yourself. You allocate hundred ringgit per month, you nak attend class investment ke, class masak ke, class menjahit ke, class... Kelas apa-apa ni lah yang basically give you new things. That is an investment in yourself. So there are two kinds of investment that I would highly recommend you to do. But the ones that I would um, highly recommend if you had just uh, graduate and baru macam literally baru kerja and in your first year of um, your, your your career. And while you are still young, um, I would highly recommend you to invest in yourself. Try to find other skills other than accounting skills. Because those skills will come in handy. I promise you, it will come in handy in the coming years. Find the skills other than accounting. At the same time, you are also building your accounting skills. Jangan, jangan tinggal accounting pula. Dah suruh, suruh cari skill lain, ditinggal pula. Keep your accounting and grow your accounting skills. And at the same time, try to find any other skills that will add on values to yourself. Okay. Uh, next question was for gold. It was a long term investment. What about unit trust? Okay. Good question. Actually, it, when it comes to investment, every kind of investment is for long term. Most of the investments are for long term. Okay. So this is a kind of uh, perception that we as consultants had to had to rectify lah. Kadang kadang bila macam kat dah ada uh, apa consultation yang klien kan. This is something that we consultants notice. For most people, we want something that give us the highest possible return with the lowest risk associated and the lower cost that we could incur. Which ideally macam best lah kan kalau macam kita ada the lowest cost and then dia akan bagi kita the highest return um, and dia akan bagi kita the return dalam tempoh jangka masa yang terdekat. Terdekat, yeah. But I'm telling you, 
these three particular um, 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 mindset is the reason why people got scammed a lot these days. <laughs> okay. Have you ever wondered, kenapa macam orang, oh, kita dah bagi tahu tau orang, uh, macam uh, this is actually a kind of scam that is being run by scammer. Dia, dia, dia macam-macam lah orang buat scam kan. There are love scams, LHDN scams, macam-macam punya scam. And uh, we are going particularly on investment scam lah. So investment scam ni, dia dia punya uh, dia punya taktik tu, dia macam literally nampak sangat scam. Dia akan kata, menjanjikan kepada anda pulangan dalam tempoh 3 jam. 15 tak dia literally 90 ada sebab ada satu group tu kat nak join dan tak tahulah macam mana aku boleh termasuk dalam telegram tu but it was interesting to be there they promise us uh, uh, you invest 5000 kot 5000 and you are getting 35000 in 3 hours i mean what kind of business is that and i'm telling you if there is such thing lebih baik ya kalau kalau betul lah if such business exist It is better for PNB or Tenaga Nasional ke Petronas. Baik dia orang tak payah buat bisnes apa-apa. Di invest kat dalam tu je. Sebab return dia tiga jam weh. Dapat berapa-berapa persen tu. right? So this is the reasons. The three uh, particular things are the reasons why people got caught in scam activities these days. So I'm just letting you know that for when it, whenever it comes to investment, it's always... Uh, paling sikit pun medium lah, medium to long term, paling sikit. But nowadays five years is a, tak, tak ada nampak apa sangat pun. It's long term investment. Also, a special advice ya yeah, to my dear, to my dear uh, younger sisters and brothers. Okay. At the point of time when you decided that you wanted to make some investments, be sure that you have your own emergency savings. Okay, what is emergency savings? It's practically an amount of money that you keep in bank or you keep at something tempat yang mudah cair lah. Okay. Uh, at least 6 bulan, gaji you, so contoh kalau macam gaji you 2,000, um, 3,000 lah. Hmm, graduate accounting kan. 3,000 lah at the point of time. Uh, so you kena ada dalam 3 kali 6 is 18. So you have to keep yourself 18k as your basic savings. Buat lah macam mana pun. And that and actually you boleh guna pun one of the tools to create this basic best emergency savings why kenapa you kena ada emergency savings okay one of the reason is because um actually we learned a lot throughout the pandemic okay so kalau you perasan ada orang yang dia nampak macam tak berapa terjejas sangat masa pandemic why dia dah ada dia punya savings or backup emergency so walaupun dia macam diberhentikan kerja ataupun dia tiba-tiba kehilangan keupayaan untuk bekerja Contoh kalau macam selama ni kita uh, bekerja, cakap tengok laptop macam ni kan. Tiba-tiba she, that person just uh, had an accident, dia punya vocal cord rosak ke. Tak boleh nak cakap. Tapi masih lagi boleh type, tapi tak boleh cakap. Sebelum ni dia punya kerjaya tu bercakap macam kat nak duduk kat ni. Dia bercakap. Tapi dia vocal, dia punya vocal cord went gone. So dia tak boleh meneruskan kerjaya dia seperti biasa. So what, what he need is some sort of uh, emergency savings yang akan cing. I'm here for you to back you up sementara you nak mencari jalan lain. You know, we have to always anticipate bad things to happen in life. And kalau kita dah prepare for that, insyaAllah your things will be good lah. Okay, so coming back to the question. Uh, goal unit trust SB, whenever it comes to investment, that is, uh, kita, uh, I mean the safe way is to accept that uh, we always have to go long term. Okay, we have to always have to go long term. All right. Any other questions from the floor? I'm assuming that we are good. Okay. <coughs> Uh, just to check if you guys are still here, uh, can you guys like, let, let us know, let uh, let myself and Christina know if you guys are still here by typing in the chat. If you guys are still here, uh, you guys type in, okay, 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 if you guys are still here, let me know, let us know that you guys are still okay, okay, thank you, if you're so good. You know, um, uh, the the best thing that you can actually help um people when it comes to you know online stuff like this 
because unfortunately for physical is way much fun lah uh, to be to, to be doing this sharing session uh, but when you respond to people uh, whenever they ask you it's actually a very nice gestures and you have no idea how that meant for me as a speaker yes i'm just letting you know that i appreciate your feedback your responses and uh, yeah I hope you don't mind to tell about you this um, one story. Okay, there was uh, this one particular story that I find very interesting, and it talks about uh, tahu tak Turkey, turkeys. Tahu tak perayaan? Tidak perayaan apa eh? Yang yang dengan ayam ayam Belanda tu? It was Thanksgiving, right? Are you familiar with Thanksgiving? Pernah dengar tak perayaan Thanksgiving? Pernah dengar tak? Okay, Thanksgiving tu dia macam ah, pernah kan? So, yang yang dia macam kalau macam pernah tengok Mr Bean, Mr Bean Thanksgiving tu yang dia macam ambil seketul ayam yang dia bawa letak atas meja tu kan? and then and then they put stuff inside the turkeys uh, to celebrate Thanksgiving lah basically kan. So um, ada ada satu uh, ada satu cerita ni um, ada seorang tetamu ini dia nampak this lady was baking the the the, the turkey. So ayam, ayam tu besar kan. Tapi setiap kali, eh, tapi bila dia dia masukkan ayam dekat dalam oven, dekat oven tu, dia akan potong sekerat. Dia bukan potong sekerat. Macam mana? Macam contoh ni ayam. Contoh ni ayam kan, dia macam ambil yang belah right click ni. Ha, dia potong sekerat kat sini. Nyik, macam tu. Dia akan potong sekerat. And then curious, being curious, this person uh, ask, um, pasal apa you potong ayam tu macam gitu? Lepas tu dia pun kata tak tahu. Because my mom do it that way. Okay, lepas tu dia pun macam, oh, oh, kenapa mak? Dia pun tak teringat nak tanya tau. Dia tanya, kenapa eh, mak buat potong ayam tu sekerat macam gitu? Lepas tu uh, dia pun pergi tanya mak dia. Uh, so, so she went and asked her mom, uh, Ma, why did you cut a portion of the turkey chicken before you bake it in the oven? And the mak dia pula cakap, I don't know. Because I saw your grandmother doing it. Ha, lepas tu dia baru dua bulan yang macam terpaksa kau oh, lah kenapa yang sebelum ni tak teringat lah nak tanya kenapa kita potong ayam ni sebelum masuk dalam oven. And then they went to see, nasib baik nenek tu hidup lagi. And then they went to see the grandmother. And then they ask, uh, kenapa eh uh, nenek potong ayam dulu sebelum masuk oven? And then nenek tu cakap apa tau? Sebab dulu oven nenek kecil. Dulu oven nenek kecil. And I'm not even, I'm not sure if you are getting the vibes from this story because I feel like, oh yeah, sometimes kita buat sesuatu tu uh, sebab kita mengikut-ngikut tau. Uh, this is the point that I, I really want to highlight this. Um, kadang-kadang kita buat sesuatu tu kita ikut, sebab kita ikut orang buat. Uh, sebab kita ikut orang buat. And especially kalau or, orang yang kita ikut itu ialah daripada kita punya older generation lah. Basically from our parents ke, from our mom ke kan. Kita ikut orang buat. Um, however, there were times that at a point in life we should be questioning kenapa orang tu buat macam ni eh? Ha, macam tu maksud dia. Kenapa orang ni potong sebahagian daripada tekis tu? Because kalau nak compare si cucu tadi dengan nenek dia punya oven, cucu dia punya oven tu is way bigger. Tapi dia still cut. Sebab apa? Dia dah biasa. Dia biasa tengok dia potong ayam sebelum masuk dalam oven so dia potong without even thinking to question kenapa benda tu dia macam ni. So how does this um, being implied, um, being applied into our personal life? So what I'm trying to make a point is that, uh, yes, sometimes kita, kita tahu, dan maybe kita boleh check uh, our self pun, um, kalau kita rasa kita sedang mengikut-ngikut sesuatu. Yeah. So if we are, if we have that kind of thoughts that we are actually doing things sebab kita mengikut sahaja sesuatu itu then we actually have the freedom to shift that kind of mindset we have the choice to question that action questioning action dia tak dia, dia tak apa tau it's okay to question stuff because it means that you wanted to learn why the reason behind kita bukan nak being disrespectful to things sebab bila kita bertanyakan soalan it means that we are question we are curious about something and we wanted to learn why dan kalau jawapan tu make sense legit and then we can always continue on doing it lah because we feel like it's best 
Dan kalau kita rasa macam dah tak ada keperluan untuk kita memfollow ataupun mengikut benda tu lagi, then we have the choice to unfollow and create our own path. Okay, so that is what I'm trying to say. Uh, would there be any other questions from the floor? Oh my God. Yeah, I'm thinking that we don't have any more questions, Christina. Um, should I like and I feel like I should end this session right here. So uh thank you again, everybody, for the kind responses, for being um I consider that participative lah. Eh. Okay, so uh, so thank you for being here and, and I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for spending your about 90 minutes of your time on this um Friday morning to listen to your kaka. Kak Nat ni, yang berbebe-bebe pagi ni, cakap pasal life lah, yang whatsoever kan. Uh, I just thought that maybe you guys could use some of the thoughts. Um, and then now, I would like to pass uh, the mic back to Kistina. Seems like we finally come to an end. I would like to express our deepest gratitude to Miss Nadra for willing to share and join uh, to for willing to share her knowledge uh, to us today. Uh, we hope that if we organize this type of event again in the future, we'll, you will be able to join us. Uh, before we end the session, I would like to remind you, all the participants to fill in all the attendance link that we provided in the check box. Do so, I have uh, to fill in? Yeah, uh, I guess no, I think. No, I'm just testing you. Okay. okay. Uh, now we are having, we are going to have a fourth session. So, dear participant, please open your camera. Oh, can request to switch on camera. Kau tidak dah suruh buka dah tadi. Gila. Okay, so everyone can open your camera and ready for our fourth session. Okay. Okay, one, two, three. All right, one more time. One, two, three. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much again, guys, for your time. I uh, really hope to see you guys again. Thank you, Michelle. Okay, thank, thank you, Nadira. Thank you, Nadira. Thank you so okay. much, Tadros. Yeah, nice Mada meeting Zura, you. Puan Shima, I miss you. I miss you. <laughs> Dia nak datang kampus. Insya-Allah, insya-Allah. Pu 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 ni I I I I I've never like uh, 